recipes. Hello, welcome. Today we will have a lesson in ancient Greek cooking together. We will give you the recipe for lamb with celery root puree and mushrooms with honey. Also, a very good sweet with dried fruit and nuts. Ancient Greeks may not have had all we have today, implements and ingredients, but their cooking was rich and royal. It is very difficult to imagine cooking without the basic ingredients we have today. Ancient Greeks cooked without tomatoes, potatoes, lemons, eggplant, rice. All these are today among the basic materials in every recipe we make. What we will do now is show you the mima, as it was called, which was pretty much like a tiganya, cubed meats, made with meat, poultry or fish or game, and they used honey, fruits such as raisins, dried figs, pomegranates, which were basic ingredients. Some of the basic ingredients in their recipes, lots of herbs and lots of spices. They also used a condiment called garros. So, garros is an ingredient that is no longer used in Greek cooking, but is used in Asian cooking as fish sauce. What was garros exactly? They took large fish, salted them heavily, left them in the sun for about three months, and this produced a liquid which they filtered, and despite the awful smell, it was used as a condiment to boost flavor and as salt in food. The smell was lost in cooking, leaving a really good intense flavor in food. So let us now prepare our meal. The first recipe, which will be the tiganya made of lamb, where we use all the offal and the intestine, usually from the animal. A tiny detail is that once upon a time they also used the animal's blood at the end of frying in order to thicken its sauce using it as a thickening agent. We don't do this today. We don't use the animal's blood. Well, if we need to thicken the sauce a little, then we will use corn flour or we will use flour. We cut the meat in small bite-sized pieces, removing as much of the fat as possible. And we do the same with the offal, which we also cut to bite-sized pieces. An implement that they must have used daily and generally in all recipes was the mortar, in which they crushed ingredients instead of finely chopping them. What exactly must we crush? Something that is made much mention of in ancient Greek recipes are celery leaves. Something else we will crush together with these is coriander. Coriander seeds and fresh coriander leaves were used in all recipes. Then come cumin seeds and any other spice in seed form that needs to be crushed in the mortar. Poppy seeds. And these we crush and we'll add to our dish later. We have the first mixture ready. And we have the celery, coriander, cumin, poppy seed and honey mixture. We will use the sultanas, the pomegranate, 
which we must break open and get the pomegranate seeds. And now that we are here, we will show you an easy way to cut the pomegranate and take the seeds. You cut it down to the middle. Take a bassina and a wooden spoon and hit the back of the pomegranate with a wooden spoon. The next ingredient is an onion, peeled and roughly chopped. We are ready with our ingredients and now we will cook our lamb. The first thing we will do is heat our frying pan. The pan must be hot when we add our ingredients, even the oil, because we want the ingredients to start sizzling the minute we put them in the frying pan. If we don't sear them correctly, our ingredients begin to stew. Something they did in ancient Greece was that good pieces of meat, such as boneless steaks, were cooked on the grill or on hot stones, and they served them with some spices. And the rest of the meat, the offal or anything else that was of lower quality, they cooked with vegetables and with other herbs. When our frying pan is ready, we will add the oil and then the meat. So we will sear the meat in oil and then cook it. As soon as our meat is ready, we will add the onions. We will continue cooking until the onions are cooked and are almost transparent. We are ready to add our vinegar. The moment of adding the vinegar plays a significant role. It is what we call putting out. Putting out the cooking heat is very important in cooking. As soon as we see the color that the food must have, after which if we leave it, it will burn, we put out the food, which means that we pour a cold liquid in the pan. The temperature of the meat is reduced and it stops the meat from burning. At this point, we are ready to add our spices and all the herbs, except the fresh coriander, which we will add in the end. We will add the pomegranate, which is also one of the ingredients that adds the sour flavor to the food, which is called sweet and sour. We have savory, we have thyme, And finally, we will add what the dish needs, namely the sweetness we will add to the sweet and sour, and this is none other than the sultanas and honey. Our meat is ready. The only thing we must do now is make its accompaniment, the celery puree, with the celery root and the mushrooms with honey. The first accompaniment for our meat, celery root puree with onion and herbs. Celery root must be an ingredient that they used quite a lot. It has a very good flavor. It is a good material to work with, a very good accompaniment.
We will peel it and cut it in pieces. The size depends on how quickly you want them to cook. What we will do next is cook the celery root with one onion. To make the sauce that will accompany or rather round off the celery root puree, we need half a glass of wine, two tablespoons of garros, we need to finely chop fresh oregano, and finely chop celery leaves. We will add lots of black pepper and one spoonful of olive oil. We will put this back on the heat to simmer for about five minutes to consolidate the flavors. We are ready to continue the celery root puree. What we need now is to drain the celery root and the onion. We drain them well. We will try to allow as much water as possible to drain from the celery root and the onion. In the blender. Of course, now we use the modern way, but in those days things were different. This puree would have been made in a mortar, or they would force it through a fine metal sieve. We are ready to continue. We are ready to continue with the celery root puree. We take the puree and we add it in the mixture we made of garros, herbs, spices and black pepper. Next, after we stir the celery root, the celery root puree with the herbs and spices and with the wine, we will simmer it again until all the moisture evaporates from the puree and it thickens. We are ready. We leave it to cool a little and allow the last trace of moisture in it to evaporate. And we now go to make the mushrooms with the honey. What we need again to begin is to heat our frying pan well and cut the mushrooms. You will notice that in ancient Greek recipes, they always talk of big, wide-headed mushrooms. Therefore, these can only be plevrotus mushrooms. We cut them in big juliennes. They will shrink in the pan. When our pan is ready and hot, 
We will add the rest of our ingredients. A little garros, a little oil, a little honey. We will allow it to cook and bind together. And we will add some celery seeds. If you can't find celery seeds, you will use finely chopped celery leaves or crushed fennel seeds. And when it has heated up, we will add the mushrooms. We will mix them well with the ingredients we have used. And we will let them caramelize with the honey and the oil we have added. What we will add at the end is black pepper. We have found out that pepper was always used where there was honey or in sweets. Black pepper works as a flavor booster for sweet flavors. It is like salt is used as a flavor booster for sharp flavors, such as lemon. Now we have all the ingredients of the first dish ready. I think it is time to put our plate together. We will put our tiganya on the plate. Of course, plates have changed a lot. The plates they used in those days were made of wood or metal. They could even be large slices of bread. The mushrooms. Another thing that was customary, a few pieces of hard cheese. A little garnish of the fresh oregano we used. I believe that this is a dish fit for an ancient Greek king. It must have been very difficult to make pastries without ovens, thermometers, the right tools. Despite that, many sweets were made in those times. Here we have ingredients that they had at that time. Dried fruit, nuts, honey of course, and sesame, and we will make a cake with fruit and nuts. To do this, we need honey, sesame, skinned almonds, bitter almonds, hazelnuts, sultanas, dried figs, stoned prunes, pomegranate seeds, and poppy seeds. Of course, this does not limit us in any way, and it shouldn't limit you to add any dried fruit you desire today. We used what there was then. To do this and start our procedure, we must first toast the sesame a little. We need to wait a bit and hear the sizzling sound it makes. Now it is beginning to toast. You can see it changing color. You can smell it. The sesame is ready. It has reached the color we want. We turn it into the mortar and we crush it. We are going to let this cool down before we continue the sesame procedure. Now, let's go crush the nuts. The almonds are ready. 
we'll put perfect. them in a baking tin next to the bitter almonds. Sira έχουν τα πικρά μίγδαλα. They are ready too. And then the hazelnuts a few at a time. Leftovers we eat, we do not throw them out. What we do now is spread them evenly in the baking tin and place them in the oven for 10 minutes at 180 degrees. This will absorb the moisture and toast them so that their oils and flavors stand out more. Now we continue and add the fruit in this mixture. We will add sultanas, some pomegranate seeds. We will add poppy seeds and figs, which we will cut into small pieces, and prunes, and as we said, any other fruit you want. Τα οποία θα τα κόψουμε σε μικρά κομματάκια και αποξηραμένα δαμάσκηνα. Και όπως είπαμε, οτιδήποτε άλλο φρούτο επιθυμείτε εσείς. These are ready and we will let them cool down. Next, we have to make perhaps the most difficult part of the recipe, which is the two sesame cakes. In short, what we are making is in fact called pastelli, a very thin pastelli, which will be in two pieces, one to go on top and one under the filling we will put in. We put three tablespoons of honey in a small pan and let it boil for a while. As soon as it boils, we add the sesame. We mix well. We want it to blend and melt its honey and we allow it to cool enough so we may work it by hand. To do this, we have to oil our work surface or slab or marble. The mixture, or should I say our pastelli, is ready. It has cooled down. So now we are preparing to make the sweets filling mixture, namely the nuts and fruit, which we transfer to a frying pan. Here we will add a little honey and in short, what we do is bond all these ingredients with the honey and put them in the pastelli cake. So we have put the filling over the pastelli and one more piece of pastelli to cover. Να το 
and we garnish with balsamic syrup and a modern version of an ancient sweet is ready. Και μια μοντέρνα εκδοχή ενός αρχαίου γλυκού είναι έτοιμο.